Hey everyone, it's Twitch65, and today we're going to build Walther's Cornerstone Glacier Gravel Company kit for my N-Scale Railroad. Let's see what's in the kit box. This kit comes with one tan colored sprue and five silver colored sprues, as well as a sheet of decals and several company name choices. The Sly Stone name sounds like a wink and a nod to Sylvester Stallone. Maybe that's because I'm modeling a spur line on the old Pennsylvania Railroad. The instruction sheet is printed in black and white with lots of verbiage, which can be both a pro and a con, as lots of details are buried in words when a picture would help with the orientation and sequencing. I quickly mocked up the main structures that would interact with the trains on the layout. As you can see, painter's tape did the job of plastic cement. I played around with a couple orientations of the building, one trying to use both of the pass-throughs but that caused the track to do kind of weird stuff because I'm using snap together Kato. And uh, one um, using just one or the other of the, uh, the pass-throughs. And off camera, I actually looked at turning the whole thing around and having the filling hopper on the, the, the end of the spur. But what really caught my attention was that when I ran an actual loco up to the structure, I noticed that the engine could not fit under the hopper nor into the structure. The height of the Cato track didn't match the building's height, a problem to be solved. In the end, I decided to set the buildings with one track on the hopper loading siding and the other as a chute loading track, thus pushing the conveyors to the back side of the layout towards the hills. I also added a curved section of track to the siding scheme. Uh, this pushed the two spur lines heading to the gravel complex towards the front of the layout. Building the kit started by separating the sprues into piles, one for the hoppers and conveyors, one for the concrete structures, and then all that corrugated metal structure, including the roofs. Since the hoppers and the main concrete structures were already mocked up, I glued them up first. I used my one, two, three blocks to keep corners square for the rest of the structural build. And for the very last wall, I actually set the building parts in place, not glued up, and slid the front wall down into place. The absolute trickiest part of the entire build is getting those conveyors correct. The instructions do tell you how to put them together, but the pictures leave a lot to be desired. It took me two or three tries to finally get it right, but here's my secret to building it right the first time. Most of this comes from parts number 52, which are the side plates. You need to cut them from the sprues very carefully. They are attached at the bottom of the part and the little extensions on all those bottom pieces need to be the exact same length. I cut mine carefully with an X-Acto blade and then I actually use a little sandpaper to make sure they're all at the right length. The next part to be aware of are these little protrusions on the upper side of part number 52. Those need to be built in such a way that they're to the inside of the conveyor that you're building, the square, if you will. Since I built mine upside down, the last clue for you is that the thick flanges on parts number 52 need to go to the top side of the build. All this will help you get the correct orientation for the parts the first time. It's really then a matter of gluing everything together. What I chose to do was to glue one side using my one, two, three blocks to keep it aligned, let that completely dry, add the second side, again, using the one, two, three blocks to keep it things aligned, and then add part number 53, which is the bottom of the truss. Those are easy. Once they lay on those protrusions and you line up the ends and everything looks square, just run a bead of cement and you're done. And here we can see the building ready to be painted. But first, I needed to fit all the roof sections. I will say the center joints on the roof are not great and not how I would have designed it. But once they're together and at scale, the paint and the weathering should help hide the, the weird little joint at the top. And at bird's eye view, they look pretty good. But before priming, I still had a few details to add, like cement form lines to break up all that large mass of concrete and lifting the structure up so that I could fit trains underneath the hopper and give it clearance into the building. 
For the main structures, I decided to use Evergreen Plastics solid square rods. They're 1 8 by 1 8 inch square. This was easily attached with some cement. For the hoppers, I opted to use balsa wood. The wood texture also seemed better suited to something that would be more likely to be seen on the working part of the layout. A quick test fit on the layout and we're ready to add paint over the prime bits. Painting was pretty straightforward. Cement color for, well, all the cement buildings. And then I turned to Vallejo Model Air Aluminum for all the roof and corrugated buildings. For the hopper and the conveyors and the small metal bracing, I just mixed up a quick custom color of faded green. For the safety railings on the hopper and the back staircase, I started with a light purple, almost a pink color. And this is to help the yellow paint that I'm gonna put in the safety color yellow to have better coverage. The very last step in this kit is weathering. I wanted the building to look new-ish for the mid-1950s. So let's just say it's a late 30s, early 40s construction, and it's 15, 20 years down the road. Most of the weathering for the entire building was made from gravel dust and then streaked it as if rain had fallen to move the dust to the edges. This gravel dust was a mixture of dark gray and white pastels, more white than gray so that I could get it to a, a slightly very light whitish gray color. And um, I added that over, like I said, over all the structure. Added a little bit of rust at the bottom of the corrugated metal parts, as well as some streaking along the windows and the roof peaks. I added a little bit of rust here and there. And again, like I said, that rust is my standard uh, mixture of brown and red pastels. And um, when you get it all laid on, you need to soften the powders. And I do that by using a soft, flat fan brush. This really helps to, like I said, soften the powder tone it down a little bit, and blend the powder into the structure. On the hopper feeder, it was mostly gravel dust with a little light bit of rust on some of the high spots of the support structures. The bottom of the hoppers got some pure black mixed in with that light gray color, and that was just uh, laid on and brushed out, and it was to give the model a little more depth and, and feel. Uh, it's, it's hard to see in person, but it makes it look less like it's just paint and more like it's an actual structure. On the conveyors here, you can really see the difference between just an overall gravel dust and how much it takes the shine off the paint and makes it look weathered and worn. So there you have it. This is my main industry for the layout and it's now completed. All that's needed is to fit it to the layout, pick a business name, add the signage, and of course, the scene will need to be built up around the building. Things like trucks, bulldozers, shovels, workers, uh, the workers' cars. They all need to be built or bought. Uh, maybe some chain link fencing. Um, of course, we'll need spot to park all the cars and vehicles and uh, have to add streets that feed the workers, give them a place to come and go from work. Oh, and of course, there's the whole matter of where is all this gravel coming from? Perhaps we should build a quarry in view instead of just making it off in the distance somewhere. But all that will come in due time. Right now, I need to fit the building in place so I can finally set the track siding and glue that down. Until next time, happy hobbying.